Hello, my name is Dr. Julia Cartwright and I'm an assistant professor here in the Department of Geological Sciences at the University of Alabama. My area of speciality is meteorites and planetary science. Right now I have been having a quick look at Silicorga. So when we find a meteorite, we usually name it after the place that it was found. So in that case, the Hodges meteorite, even though it actually hit Mrs. Hodges and was found in the Hodges property or rented property, it's actually given the designation Silicorga because that is the name of the town in which it was found. This meteorite is relatively well known. It's the only one that has been shown to actually injure someone, which sounds slightly morbid when you think about it, but that has given it some um, notoriety. In that sense, um, it's not necessarily a sample that's been studied a huge amount before. Uh, we have some uh, thin section, we have this thin section that we're looking at now, and the uh, Smithsonian Institute has some samples as well that they have studied. So I was interested in it from um, a couple of things, from a bit of a popular science avenue. Um, also, it's because this is the first meteorite that I have looked at that has actually originated or was found here in Alabama. So that's a pretty fun thing to be uh, thinking about too. Because this meteorite is actually quite uh, special to us, especially here at UA, I've been trying to look at ways that we can examine it without causing any damage to it. So one of the um, avenues I've been pursuing is to use a technique called XRF, which is a technique that allows you to uh, determine the composition of the material by using X-ray. So XRF stands for X-ray fluorescence. And what you do is you have a device that um, emits an X-ray and that X-ray interacts with the surface of the sample and causes a release in energy, which you can effectively measure. And this gives you some indication about what the composition of the sample is. So one of my students has been working uh, using this uh, technique. My kind of prime interest here was that it's not something that I've looked at before. It's an Alabama curiosity, and I'm trying to examine ways to get some analysis from this sample without damaging it. So I'm currently examining a thin section of the uh, Silicorga meteorite, also known as the Hodges meteorite. This is provided to me by the Natural History Museum uh, here in Tuscaloosa. I'm using some of the instrumentation in my lab just to get a really good look at this sample. Every time I look at it I see something brand new. It's a meteorite that is known as a chondrite and it contains some really fascinating phases and different kind of uh, crystals and, and minerals that are really exciting and really quite beautiful to look at. I have a few different settings on my microscope that allow me to change the way the light is kind of driven through the sample um, with the application of some filters. And what that does is it gives me a new view of the sample that can help me identify different minerals that are present. So right now we are looking at it in what we call plain polarized light. So everything looks kind of like white or brown. We'll see, there we go, look at that. So that is um, a chondral. But with ordinary chondrites, such as this sample, these things uh, contain chondrules. And these sorts of phases are believed to be some of the earliest things to have been formed from the solar nebula. So these things are effectively the oldest things that you might be seeing through the microscope. It's really exciting. So we're talking like 4.568 billion years old or so. So, I mean, it's older than me. <laughs> Chondrules typically exhibit lots of different types of shapes, um, but they're just also pretty great to look at. So um, what I want to do now is I'm going to place a different filter through um, the microscope. Um, so this changes uh, so that I'm looking at what's called cross-polarized light. In this sort of view, you can start seeing kind of new information is kind of coming up. So what petrologists, people who like to look at things um, or study minerals um, down the microscope do is by putting in a filter like this, we find out new information from the minerals and we can use the colors that we see to help identify the different types of minerals that are present. Light goes through minerals in a few different ways and um, as it gets kind of slowed down, it'll show a slightly different color. So that's one of our kind of diagnostic features that we're looking at. So this is a chondral. It looks like it has a kind of radial shape to it. You might see and there's some kind of display of things maybe uh, coming around from an edge like this. Um, so we think that's, that might be maybe a radial peroxine. Um, peroxine is the name of the mineral. So let's see what else we can find. So there's another one here. There's a much larger one there. You can see there's a bit more of that radial kind of shape going on. Here's another type of chondral there. So this one looks very different from the first, more kind of like a crystalline sort of texture. There's another one there. Look at this one, look at that. Super exciting. 
So this, <laughs> this meteorite is just kind of what I might say chock-a-block <laughs> full of uh, lots of really interesting phases. This meteorite in particular has some very, very well-formed chondrules. You can absolutely see them. They've got very, very well-defined edges. And this kind of tells me that the sample uh, probably hasn't really exhibited or experienced a huge amount of change or alteration. A couple of years ago, when I first started here at EUA, I went and spoke to the folks at the museum just to be like, hey, hi, I'm here. I'm actually a meteorite expert. I'd love to get to know some of the samples and talk to you guys a little bit. And since then, really, we've just been in discussions about what we can do with the samples and how we can work with the uh, other meteorites that they have in their collection. And they very kindly loaned me the sample to, just to kind of have a look at it and kind of really start the process of doing some analysis. So I'm hoping this is the start of um, further techniques that I'm able to use with the, with the sample. The type of meteorites that are falls versus finds. So we, we call a meteorite that's a fall meteorite one that um, is seen to or observed to fall and then later uh, collected rather than finds, which are samples that are located in an area usually during an expedition of sorts. So uh, people go out to areas where um, it's really easy to spot a meteorite. So they might go out to somewhere like a glacier or they might go out to somewhere that's more like a desert environment. Um, and in those sort of localities, it's really easy to spot a kind of dark rock in the middle of nowhere and be like, well, it has to have come from somewhere. So I haven't handled or um, dealt with a huge number of full samples, especially as big as this one. Like this sample, the, the, the Silicorga meteorite, is probably one of the largest falls that I've actually had the pleasure of, of handling and looking at. Whenever I talk to my students about meteorites in general, especially my 101 students, they're like, I've seen the Hodges sample, I've heard about that, or you know, be like, hey, my parents told me about this. Or if we've got some students who are local to the area, or even alumni, that they, they will come and talk to me and be like, hey, I used to go and see that Hodges meteorite every time I came to uh, Tuscaloosa. So it's something that is actually quite close to the hearts of a lot of people around here.